So I'd like to start by uh, paying tribute to one of these men here, the one who isn't made of wax. Um, that's my pa, uh, who has recently, um, oh, what's that thing Shakespeare said? He's gone to join my mum in the, um, the, the undiscovered country from whose born no traveller returns. Um, and uh, this is him back in 85 when we were on a trip on the Thames and we went to, th to a thing called the, um, uh, the uh, Royalty and Empire Museum in um, Windsor. It was uh, in sort of half of the railway station. It was a Madame Tussauds thing all about Queen Victoria. Um, and uh, in fact, there's me in more exalted company. That's uh, Victoria, not Queen Victoria, but the Princess Royal. Um, so you can see I'm a lot younger and hairier, um, but not so bearded. Um, now, it was uh, Pop and Mom who uh, started me down the road of uh, loving wax museums. Um, in the early 70s, uh, they took me and my two brothers to a place called Louis Tussauds French Waxworks in Brighton. Um, <coughs> we, um, the, uh, this, this picture, I have Facebook to thank for this. Um, this, this picture, in fact, is from the late 70s. You can see here they are swanky about having John Travolta. But in fact, um, it was the same, um, the other thing was the same forever, which was this uh, tableau of the pit and the pendulum. Um, and it's, it's, it's not very easy to see, but there's a sort of swinging axe thing here. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't Disneyland, but it was a bit sort of, you know, animatronic, because this moved back and forth, and there's a guy here, you can't really see him, but he's lying across the length of the window, and um, when the thing swung away from him, his head would come up, and he would look nervously down the window at the thing, and then his head would go down again. Uh, as it moved back towards him. Now, um, if we just... Um, interesting to note that this place was called Louis Tussauds. Hmm? Oh, don't worry, that was me. <laughs> uh, Louis Tussauds. Um, this was, I believe, a great-grandson of Madame Tussauds, who sometime in the Victorian period broke away from the family firm and uh, started his own exhibition in Regent Street, which was presumably quite short-lived, because it certainly isn't there now. Um, but he also licensed his name to various wax museums around the country and around the world. So according to the internet, there's still a Louis Tussauds wax museum in Bangalore in <laughs> India. Um, anyway, um, a few years later we went to another Louis Tussauds, ostensibly Louis Tussauds museum in Great Yarmouth. This is actually celebrated as the worst wax museum in the world. Um, I think it's great, and um, well, well, we'll be coming back to that. Um, in, in the meantime, or oh, I went back to it many years later, but in the meantime, of course, I went to Madame Tussauds in London in 1976, went with my granny for the first time, and uh, Marie Tussauds uh, used to claim that she actually modelled heads fresh from the guillotine. Um, I'm not sure how true that is, I think she tended to exaggerate that kind of thing. Um, but certainly she was around at the time before, before she came to England. And uh, actually I took this, this uh, on a later trip, but certainly these heads of uh, Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette had been in the exhibitions you know, for hundreds of years, basically. Uh, I don't want you to think that I'm obsessed with uh, gory things, because uh, there were other people. Uh, although here was a man who was certainly obsessed with gory things, Alfred Hitchcock, and, uh, and also Hans Christian Andersen, who I've, in I've included because um, my brother Kerry, who's here with me tonight, um, he, he wasn't uh, scared so much um, by things in the Chamber of Horrors, but uh, you were a bit freaked out by Hans Christian Andersen, weren't you? Um, and uh, maybe, maybe it was his woolen trousers, knitted trousers. <laughs> Uh, very odd. Maybe they were all the rage at one time in Denmark, I don't know. Um, I mean, he should really have written a fairy story about an enchanted pair of knitted trousers, surely. I think he missed a trick there. Um, what's next? Oh yeah, um, Tussauds have always led the field, I think partly because they've got 
well, they've always had the money, I suppose, to have in an in-house department where they make their own stuff. Other people have third parties making them, and they tend to have to add um, sort of wigs and things like that. Whereas you'll see, um, in, in their brochures, they always have a section where they show you how it's done. And here we see it, they're actually, with this one, because this is from the 70s, they're making Liza Minnelli. And they would have, like any portrait, they would have uh, a sitting, hopefully. I think probably Hitler didn't do a sitting, but Liza Minnelli obviously did. Um, and they would take loads of pictures, do measurements and that kind of thing. And um, then they'll, they'll build an armature, decide on the pose, build an armature, and make a, um, a, a sculpture in, in clay. And from that, they will then make the mould, and the the body would end up being made of fiberglass, but of course the head and the hands are made of wax, and um, they use the clay head to make the mould with plaster of Paris, and that would be in about 12 parts, and then they take it apart, rebuild it, and then pour in the molten uh, wax, and, uh, and then, here's the thing, every strand of hair is put into the warmed scalp individually, which... Uh, is obviously quite a labour of love and, and hopefully uh, very well paid too. And uh, there she is taking shape, makeup and stuff. And there she was in the exhibition. And uh, actually you can see Audrey Hepburn there in the background in the conservatory. Um, now, it didn't always work. I mean, I think the Liza Minnelli is, is great. Um, they did a very good um, poster campaign. Here's a postcard I got at the time of um, here's a look at me kid, it's Humphrey Bogart, but they've, uh, they've obviously used a picture of the actual Humphrey Bogart because the one in the exhibition was not quite so good. Um, on the other hand, sometimes they would absolutely hit the mark. Um, this is uh, Jean-Paul Marat after his assassination. Now, the French revolutionary people were really hot on propaganda, they were way ahead of the uh, the game because they not only got uh, Jacques Louis David to come in and draw a um, do a portrait a painting from the, uh, the festering corpse, um, they also got Marie Tussaud in uh, to to do a a wax effigy and uh, that that's 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 one of I, I I don't I haven't been back for years so I don't know if it's still there but um, it was obviously there for a long time and it's it's quite startlingly good, especially if you compare it to another one which we saw in um, San Francisco. Um, here we are, the Fisherman's Wharf um, Wax Museum. There's Mara. I find it fascinating that, um, what was her name? Oh, it's gone out of my head. Corday. Sorry, Charlotte Corday, thank you. Um, she apparently has stabbed him in the chest and yet no blood has spurted onto her virgin <laughs> white dress. Fascinating. Also what I like is the fact that there's this dresser there with nothing on it. Now I wonder is this just a bit of half arsedness in the set dressing department or where they make a point about Mara's um, apparently quite ascetic lifestyle. I guess we'll never know. Um, anyway, yeah, the, um, <clears throat> that was San Francisco. We actually went to another one, uh, 1980. We went there on a family holiday um, with mum and dad and both my brothers. Um, we also went to the Chinatown Wax Museum. Now, um, my favourite thing here was the assassination of Little Pete, who was this brutal Chinese gangster who was um, finally uh, ambushed in a barber shop, and they had a tableau of that. But I, I couldn't find anything on the internet, so, uh, but I did manage to find this picture. I'm not sure what it is exactly, but that's from the Chinatown Wax Museum. Other wax museums I have visited um, include the Movie Land Wax Museum, that was in Los Angeles. I'm quite proud of this uh, picture I took of the outside. Not quite so proud of the picture I took inside of the set of uh, the USS Enterprise. Let's be clear. Well, at least it's, you know, genuine. I could have just scanned the souvenir brochure and given you something really good instead of this piece of hand. But, uh, never mind. Um, um, and there's Osborne Smith's on the Isle of Wight. Um, it used to be located in, uh, supposedly, the most haunted house on the island, certainly one of the oldest. Uh, proper, proper creepy it was. And um, my favourite thing here was 
the thing of a there was a legend of a lady who apparently died and uh, they put her in a coffin and it turned out that she wasn't dead after all. Uh, whether there was actually a skeleton playing the organ or not, I don't know, but it was, uh, that's what made it for me. Um, what else? Ah, Louis Tussaud strikes again. This was in Copenhagen, um, uh, which I went to about 10 years ago, something like that. And the, the best thing in here was the Hall of Artists. You see uh, people like Van Gogh, and I think that's probably Gainsborough, Dali, uh, Toulouse-Lautrec, and here's is that possibly your man himself, Da Vinci, and Mona Lisa. Um, and you see what they've got is um, everyone's done like a version of the Mona Lisa in their particular style. That was very good. Um, now, what's, what's the connection between all these things? They're no longer there. They've all closed down, along with places like the Friargate Wax Museum in New York. Come on, come on, behave. Um, Louis Tussauds Shakespearean Exhibition in Stratford-upon-Avon. Uh, the Edinburgh Wax Museum. Um, oh, and the Royalty and Empire, um, which I mentioned at the beginning. Um, the funny thing about that is that that was actually a Madame Tussauds thing. Um, which is also no longer there. Now, when I did a version of this talk in Brighton, uh, during the Q&A session, it turned out that someone in the audience uh, had actually worked at this place in the 80s. And he told me that um, even, even a, an organisation like uh, Madame Tussauds is not above kind of recycling stuff, because um, with this Guard of Honour, it was... Uh, you know, cost of dozens at least, and you know, it's expensive to make all those heads and stuff. So apparently they did cannibalise some of the figures that they decided they didn't want to use anymore from the London exhibition. And apparently someone in, somewhere in here, was a guardsman with the head of Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's quite, quite unusual. Uh, this, this eventually went the way of all wax, because um, it, it was, as I say, in part of the Windsor Railway um, station, and the railway people wanted it back eventually, apparently, so um, they got their marching orders, which um, would be unusual for the Tuso organisation, who are usually used to being the ones calling the shots. Um, but um, I, I had wanted for many years to see the Louis Tuso uh, Wax Museum in Blackpool, when I finally got there, they'd been uh, taken over by Madame Tussaud. And um, here's me with David Beckham, of course. Um, I'm not sure my picture does it justice, how, how good it actually is, because all the figures in the place are absolutely amazing. Um, I mean, they're so good, it was actually a little bit boring. Um, funnily enough, uh, I don't know if they still got this there, but there, there came a point in the exhibition we were going around where, quite unannounced, there was a set of shelves with um, some old heads, presumably from the previous exhibition. And um, there's Frank Sinatra, Ozzy Osbourne, there's Whoopi Goldberg, I think there's Judith Chalmers there. Um, <laughs> Mr. T, that's uh, Lane Page, if I'm not mistaken. And this is Charlie Caroli. Who here remembers Charlie Caroli? Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, yes, Right Charlie was his TV show in the early uh, in the early seventies. Right children, Right Charlie is what they would say. Thank you, thank you. Um, and he was in fact the um, the star clown for many years at the Blackpool Town Circus. And I think it a real shame that Madame Tussauds should have thought that he was no longer worthy of being in the. Um, yeah, he was probably dead by then for years and years, but, but even so. Um, but, um, yeah, so, for me, I, 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 would, I would sacrifice a bit of quality for a bit of heart and soul, personally, when it comes to wax museums, and um, you have to be committed to that idea when it, when it comes to the, um, the, the place in Great Yarmouth. Um, the, um, the tabloids uh, used, used to have, have fun uh, every so often when it was, uh, was a bit quiet on the news front. People like the Daily Mail would do a centre spread and say, hey, there's this crap waxworks in, um, in, in, in Norfolk. Uh, see if you can tell who these people are. And um, now, 
I'm, I'm an actor, and there's been some debate recently about do we need critics, and uh, cr critics are too harsh, blah, blah, blah. I sort of think that if you put your head above the parapet and you ask people to pay money to see you do something, and you've got to take the slings and arrows. That said, um, I um, eventually met the lady who ran this place, and she was very genuinely hurt by this, this, this kind of stuff. So I sort of see both sides of the argument. Uh, here's some more of the, um, this, this was actually um, in the Daily Mail, uh, my dad saved it for me, um, when um, this was the, I think the year after I went, um, and they were, they were going to close down. Um, I think that's fairly obviously Neil Kinnock, although he does look a bit like Vladimir Putin as well, but uh, <laughs> Putin was a bit later, I mean, clearly that's obviously, you know, face ache. Um, Mussolini, yeah, he's a bit tanned, but he is from Italy, isn't he? You know, let's face it, that's obviously Joan Collins, so I think they protest too much to these people. Anyway, a uh, little story about the House of Wax in Great Yarmouth. In the year 2011, I had a bit of corporate acting work, um, which involved a series of little sort of paid working holidays essentially at uh, centre parks around the country and because um, it was to do training stuff for Sainsbury's and it, it involved being partnered up with a female actor and then having to do these things where you'd go on and uh, say these, repeat these true stories about bad management and we'd do, sometimes it would be just sort of five minutes of actual performing a day and then we'd have the, um, the day to ourselves. Anyway, I was, um, I was uh, working with a lady called Jenny Rowe, um, and um, we got along quite well, and on the a particular day, uh, I said to her, I want to do this uh, audio, radio um, documentary about the decline of the English waxwork, and uh, so I've arranged to go to Great Yarmouth. I should have said, by the way, that we were in Sherwood Forest near Nottingham. <laughs> so uh, I've arranged to go to Great Yarmouth to inter interview this lady, Jane Hayes, about her wax museum. And of course, the truth is that Great Yarmouth isn't that much nearer to Nottingham than it is to Brighton. So it was very much a labour of love to drive across to two and a half counties to go and do this thing. Anyway, I said, you can come with me if you want. And she said, uh, no, that's okay, I'll, I'll stay here and, and do some work. I said, oh, fair enough, which is quite like me, but never mind. Um, anyway, so off I went um, into Lincolnshire, which, uh, no offence to any uh, Lincolnshireans here, but uh, it's not the... Um, yeah, even on a good day, but on, on, on a great day when it was drizzling constantly, it was, it was quite, quite demoralising. Um, but anyway, I, I, I got there to the House of Wax, Louis Tussauds House of Wax in Great Yarmouth. And um, I, in, in deference to, to, to Jane, who was uh, used to people coming in and taking pictures and then putting them on the internet and saying, this is crap, isn't it? Um, I didn't take any pictures except this one, which was fair game because it's, uh, it was in a cabinet out the front. But obviously this is Laurel and Hardy. Um, and I also took a picture of me in front of it. Now this was going to be the picture um, that would be in the Radio Times when they broadcast my documentary. Um, but obviously that <laughs> didn't happen. I, 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 I did the interview with Jane. And I went and got very wet on the beach, and then I set off back to Sherwood Forest. And um, it turned out that Jenny, even though I got back after nine o'clock and all the restaurants were about to shut, she had actually not had dinner. She'd waited to have dinner with me, which I thought was an encouraging sign. And indeed it was, because we started going out shortly after that, and we ended up getting wed. Um, <laughs> but we... we Hopefully, we're eventually actually going to find somewhere to live together, which would be good. But anyway, the point is, I, I didn't manage to save the, the English uh, waxworks, you know, or the English independent waxworks, because two shows are doing okay. But I did at least find someone to, uh, to go to waxworks with me when we could find them. Uh, in fact, we, um, this is us in Dublin. You have to go to Dublin to find waxworks these days. And um, 
it seems as if we deliberately colour coordinated for this room here, this writer's <laughs> room in the Dublin Wax Museum. It's just coincidence. And uh, but um, here we are with Brendan Bean. Uh, who's sort of okay, and an absolutely extraordinarily lifelike um, Samuel Beckett here. Um, so um, that's it, basically, and uh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Robert. Um, was there ever a, a, a waxworks in um, in Eastbourne? There was nothing because you mentioned Brighton. No? Yeah, uh, not as far as I know. No, no. Anybody know if there was one in Eastbourne? Yeah, yeah no. Any any questions for Robert? Any anyone else? Uh, uh, for, uh, there we are. At the back. Yes, Ted. Have, have you ever been tempted to try and buy a waxwork, or do you own any? Or I don't own any. Um, I don't. Um, the, um, Dave Bramwell, who does the Catalyst Club in Brighton, when, when I uh, talked about this subject there, he brought in um, a pair of wax feet, which he got from a guy who um, made stuff for Madame Tussauds. I thought they did it all in-house, but it does seem that they sometimes have um, uh, people um, who, they, who they commission to do stuff from outside. I can't remember whose feet they were, there was someone famous. Go. This isn't much of a story, is it? But anyway, uh, what is the story? No, I don't own one. I did once try to make one, a miniature one. I, I actually got as far as uh, making a mould from a head of a, uh, an action man. I think it was a G.I. Joe, actually. And uh, using sort of bandages dipped in, um, dipped in plaster of Paris. And I got as far as... Uh, yeah, I did actually make, make the head out of wax. Um, but I didn't really get as far as making the whole body. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Any any other questions for yes yes. Why yeah. wax? <laughs> why wax indeed? Why 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 do I like wax? No, no, why not some other material? That's a very good question. Um, <laughs> I suppose it has a higher melting point than chocolate. Um, <laughs> I, I really don't know the answer to that. Oh well. I suppose, I, I, I suppose it's 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 easier to make a wax model of someone than to get someone to make them in in stone or something like that. Although you could argue that if uh, Tussauds process uh, involves making a um, a sculpture of yeah. the person, why not just paint the sculpture? And I don't really know the answer to that. Possibly it's that because. Um, Madame Tussaud, when she started out, I believe, she had, for many years, she had a, um, a touring exhibition and maybe, you know, things made of wax are going to be lighter to cart around than things made in stone. Maybe it's something to do with that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, thanks for the question. Spike. Any, any other? Yes. Yeah. yeah. The, obviously, the demise of the wax museum, um, would you have any inkling as to why? And if so, what's replaced it? I think that, well, yeah, um, it's difficult, it's, it, is, it is difficult to get, to unstick anyone from their sofa these days to leave the house and do anything, and hats off to everyone who's, who's actually unstuck themselves from their sofa tonight to come and see this. Um, but it's, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know, you know, I will, I will, I will have the same, same thing you know, doing a show on Saturday and often wonder why I do it because there's so much indifference out there um, uh, to be struggled against, but you know, you've got to do something before you die, I suppose. Uh, I can't remember what the original question was. <laughs> um, the demise of the wax. Yeah, um, well, it, it's weird, isn't it? Because the Tussaud Empire seemed to be going from strength to strength, and yet all these little ones sort of fall by the wayside. Maybe it's because they're not as good, and maybe most people you know, like me, don't take pleasure in the ones that aren't, aren't so good. Uh, maybe, but, I mean, with cinema as well, maybe it's that we don't need to suspend disbelief so, <coughs> so much as perhaps we would have done before, you know, in, uh, with cinema, it's obviously, you know. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think when Madame Tussauds was, was first doing her stuff, people 
were constantly seeing photographic images of people's there to take her word for it that um, that Voltaire looked like this or whatever because most people wouldn't have known. Mm. I don't know. Mm. That's a good point. And oh, sorry, uh, did you have? A question? Yeah. No, my question was um, how just um, how interesting was that journey from Nottingham? To <laughs> <laughs> and, um, can you actually think of any interesting landmarks that you saw? <laughs> Yeah, Lincolnshire. Uh, there are a lot of fields, but I uh, can't remember so any. I, but I don't have a particular. It's flat, isn't it? It's very flat. Yes, very yeah, flat. It's very yeah. flat. That's my yeah. favourite field. I thought, yeah, there was a question. Yeah, I wanted to ask um, these days, you can, you can print a 3D heart you know, in 3D. Yes. So presumably, people who need models for films or whatever can make this stuff very easily. So I guess it's de it, the craftsmanship is sort of devalued. Could be. <laughs> yes. I mean, if they, could, if they could do a scan of your whole body, could they print the whole body? I suppose they could. But maybe that comes back to the thing I was saying about the, the, the models at the Blackpool mm. Museum being so good, good that they were a bit dull. Mm. Mm. You know? And I, what is it that I want from a wax museum? I, I don't know. I think it's not necessarily verisimilitude. I, I suppose the thing I like is they're always a bit creepy. Um, and possibly if they're a bit crap, maybe they're more creepy. There was a, there was a, when we went to the, um, the one in Great Yarmouth the first time, the thing that really stood out for me was in fact the thing where there was no likeness because they very cleverly used, there was a staircase behind a, a locked sort of grill um, which went up um, and at the top of the staircase was a figure and you could only see their legs and that was Jack the Ripper. <laughs> Proper creepy. <laughs> wow. Well there we are. I think on that note, <laughs> can we thank Robert for a fabulous, fabulous device.